My lab is actually interested in the other class of genes that emerges from these kinds of analysis. Here again, now we have a triplet code of sequences that encodes for my name in amino acid code. And what we will see when we compare across this sequence is that there are a lot more red changes than blue changes. In fact, a lot more red changes than what you'd expect, even by chance alone. It's in fact easier to align these sequences at the nucleotide level than it is to align them at the amino acid level, where my name can change to a popular car model very quickly, because every mutation has a high likelihood of altering the amino acid being encoded. And this is exactly the signature we see when you have an interface that is precisely at the interface between a host and a virus conflict. And that's because every single one of these amino acid mutations is potentially beneficial and has, acted, uh, has been acted upon by natural selection to increase their rate of fixation in the population. Hence the term diversifying selection. In contrast to purifying selection, natural selection is increasing the amino acid diversity of these protein coding genes. As a result, what we have again is an apparent rate of replacement changes, Ka or Dn, which is increased over the apparent rate of synonymous changes. Once again, this is not a bias that is introduced by mutation. This is simply a different selective sieve that is acted upon by natural selection. This term, diversifying selection, is also referred to as positive selection or adaptive evolution. I'll use these terms interchangeably, and they're only different in the context of the tempo of which these changes happen.